after he finishes, he comes over, he puts his arm around me, and he tells me you have nothing to worry about. She doesn't excite me either. <laughs> oh my God. True story. <laughs> so this woman got crazy. I guess she pictured herself on the table. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but it's a true story. Where I'm only telling things that really happened, you know? So, uh, the other night, uh, Florida also, they invited me to, 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 to for after dinner, you know, they, don't, they never invite me for dinner because I eat too much, you know, but they invite me for after dinner. I'm one of those kind of guys. And they were telling jokes, and I don't usually tell jokes when regular people are telling jokes, because I, you know, I'm more or less like a professional, so I don't want to interfere with them. Why, that's the funniest thing you heard tonight? <laughs> So, I don't like to interrupt people when they're telling jokes, but I was talking to a few friends of mine, and I was telling them what really happened the other night, you know? What was happening? I was a little excited. I wanted to have a little romance with my wife, AK, you know? And, uh, and she wasn't ready or wasn't willing, or like always. I mean, I mean, she was like a little, you know, cold, you know? So I was pushing, you know? So, so you know what she tells me? She says, when you finish, can you put... Please put the covers back on me. <laughs> so this person overheard the joke. It was a joke. This one really didn't happen. And she went over to tell all the people in the house. I said, you can't make things like this up. I said, I made it up. You know, she, she goes around telling people my stories, okay? Uh, I came back from Israel this year. My granddaughter got married. So we went for the wedding. Thank you. She married... A kibbutznik, a farmer. <laughs> My granddaughter is a college graduate. She has a master's degree, and she marries a farmer. So I walk over to her after I get off the plane. I says, uh, Rini, with all your education, how did you find the farmer? She says, Grandpa, I put an ad in the Israeli newspaper, and I didn't get any results. But while I saw my ad, I saw somebody had an ad. Farmer looking for a wife with tractor. <laughs> Please send picture of tractor. <laughs> he didn't care what the woman looked like. <laughs> That's a true story, by the way. But on this plane was a very interesting plane. I got on the plane the last minute. I was, you know, just nervous. And I grabbed the pastrami sandwich on the way to the plane. And when I got on the plane, they sat me next to this Arab guy, big fat guy with the jabalia and the karamiya and the whoosh and the whole thing. Big fat guy taking three seats. And I'm sitting there and my stomach is killing me, you know? So the plane takes off. He falls asleep. And I throw up all over him. Throw up all over You had your lunch already, right? No, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We didn't. So anyhow, about a half hour later he gets up and I look at him. I said, I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> True story, by the way. So behind me was a rabbi and a priest. You know, a coincidence, I was sitting in front of a rabbi and a priest. So the stewardess comes over. She tells the rabbi, can I get you something? He says, I'd love to have a vodka Collins. Okay, now she goes to the priest. Father, what can I get you? He says, before I let alcohol pass these lips, I commit adultery first. Oh. Rabbi says, I didn't know we had a choice. <laughs> True story, by the way. Uh, the funny thing about this, this wedding was very, very, very religious wedding. You know, one of these uh, very religious places. And they have what they call a bedecking. I don't know if you ever went to a J-Dub wedding. Yeah. Bedecking. Yeah. It's like they parade the, uh, the, the bride and then the, 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 the groom. And the groom has to come and see if it's the real bride, not like Jacob with her hair and her hair. They pick up whatever it is. And they bring him. They all wear white linen type of suits, the Israeli men, and he's walking, and they're taking a video of the whole thing, and I'm standing there, he's walking, and the cat holding him up, you know, it's about a half, about five block walk, walking, 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 and while they're taking the video, and I yell out, 
Dead man walking. <laughs> it looked like he was going to the gallows. Uh, we just uh, finished Pesha recently. I don't know how, you know. Because I remember because I had an argument with my wife. I always argue with my wife. Uh, she was very busy with Pesha, and I came home late from work, and I see her. She's very busy, and I see her running out with the bag of garbage, one of these big garbage bags that's not open, and the garbage man is leaving, you know? And she's running after him like about a half a block, and she said, am I too late for the garbage? He says, no, jump right in, he told <laughs> True story, by the way. Talking about my wife. You know, I get up every morning, 4.30 every morning. I go to Shahood, I learn. I go to synagogue, there for three hours, you know, and the other night, three o'clock in the morning, she's poking me in the ribs. She's sleeping, Hazita. No, she's doing it to me. <laughs> she says, you were cursing me out in your sleep. I said, who said I was sleeping? I had to sleep to curse you out? <laughs> but I was having a bad dream. A terrible dream. That's what I was, I was probably cursing, but you know, I wasn't really sleeping. I had a bad dream. I had a dream that I was at a big party. And who walks into the room? The devil. A dream, you know? And everybody runs out of the room except me. And he comes over to me and says, Hurdle. How come you're not afraid of me, the devil? I said, I should be afraid of you. I'm married to your sister. Oh. <laughs> Milo, you know my wife, Milo. You know. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you that another, when I was in Israel, I forgot to tell you. I'm standing in the King David Hotel. Very 400 hours at night. I couldn't believe it myself. Thank God I didn't pay, you know. But. And I'm standing in the lobby minding my own business by myself. And you can't believe it, with all the security in the King David Hotel, a hooker came over to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> a hooker came over to me. She looks at me, I'm wearing a yarmulke, gray hair, no teeth, the whole business. You know? <laughs> she says, big boy, you want to have a good time? <laughs> I look at her, I says, you know what, I'm thinking what? But man, I was curious, you know. I, I says, I look around, I said, how much you charge? She says, uh, $500. Oh, boy. <laughs> She's got it. I, said, I, I thought it was more like $10, I told her, you know. <laughs> Tell me how old I am. <laughs> so about a half hour later, I'm walking with my wife down the lobby. The same hooker says, that's what you get for $10. <laughs> <laughs> Very true story, by the way. I don't want you to get the wrong impression about my wife because she's a wonderful woman. Guys. Of course she is. How do you know? Oh, in fact, just like a woman like that, I had a friend of mine, I, I go to shul, Gabby Kesri, and, and, and he's telling me, I always tell him jokes about my wife. That's my business, you know? It's my teva, right? And he says, you know something? In day you don't deserve your wife. I said, I know you do, I don't. <laughs> Uh, anyway, my wife, God bless her, she's uh, trying very hard. The other day she came home with a mud pack, you know, how they put the mud all over the face, you know. Unbelievable, the whole, from the top to the bottom, all mud, you know. She looked beautiful for three days, unbelievable. <laughs> then the mud fell off. <laughs> uh, I, when I, while I was in Israel, uh, they had, I'll tell you about the Rabbi Nahum, which I learned with. It's, a, it's 4 30 in the morning. We've got about 20 guys. We're all sleepy. And he knows I tell jokes. And he likes to push me. Whenever there's an opportunity, he likes me to wake up the class. So the other day, he was telling a story from a Gemara, Sanhedrin. It was about a great Sadiq, a Sadiq. They put him in a Roman prison. Very harsh prison. Vertical, can never lay down. But they gave him a conjugal visit with his wife. And miracle of miracles, the rabbi is telling the story from the Gemara. The wife conceived, which is biologically impossible, vertical. So now he wants me, he says, Tawil, isn't that a wow? I said, Rabbi, what's the big deal? 
I have a friend of mine, his wife 